All right, here we go, part two. Lights back on. Everything seems to be close to normal again. Okay? I don't know why I do that. Open my eyes like Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're talking about standing outside, observing, and the thought process that happens during that observation time. <clears throat> now, I'm going to put on my big boy voice now. <laughs> I used to be very uncomfortable looking at myself like this. Now it's something that I absolutely look forward to. Can you imagine that? Brilliant, isn't it? Look forward to seeing myself, talking, sharing information. This is somebody who was quite shy and very reserved. Now I can look dead center into the camera and say exactly what I want to say. And I can do that while talking to people as well. Do I look cross-eyed? Okay. So, 30 minutes reflecting, thinking, wondering about routine. Why the routine? What is routine? Why don't I get so much, why don't I get as much fulfillment from doing that than I do from doing this? I mean, just this. This is like, it doesn't mean much to most, but it means a hell of a lot to me to be able to share the things that I have in my head. I have a bit in my head, my philosophies, my way of looking at things. It might not compete with a lot of people, but it competes with me. And then there's some that it helps. And I get feedback from them. Ah, by the way, you can actually send emails and you can even ask me questions. You can enter the questions below when you watch the video in the comment section or you could just email me. Info at EA number two WO. Info at EA two dot com. I'll answer your questions. I'll even you know make a video with the questions. That's no problem. I enjoy doing these things. It's interesting, it's liberating. It's an attempt at finding freedom. Because I know I'm not free, I haven't been free. I'm 50 years old, I've never known freedom, I've never known justice, I've never known equality, nowhere, no how, all the countries I've lived in, I've lived in at least three or four countries, four I think, if you had Finland, which wasn't really a very long stay, but still, I've never known justice to exist anywhere. I've never known democracy to exist anywhere. I have never known, like I said, freedom, justice. These are theories. These are abstract theories that have been postulated by people who want to continue to justify their being in power and removing power from those who are supposed to truly have the power. So it's a process of disempowerment. It doesn't exist, it's an illusion. Because if we were free, why the hell do we need to wear a mask? Somebody's telling you, okay, let's look at this situation of the, about the mask, yeah? If your mask is working, then mine shouldn't really matter. If your mask works, if it saves you, you shouldn't be bothered about mine. You're safe. Nothing's coming in, nothing's going out. So what's the problem? So it's based on choice. If you look at the fatality rate, you take good look at the num take a very good look at the numbers, you'll see that there is something. And it has fatality issues, but then again it mostly plagues people with you know, who also have secondary issues, who have prior illnesses and so on and so forth, and old. But that's another topic. I don't really want to delve into that because there's just so much controversy around it. We will wait and ultimately we will know the truth. And as it says, the truth will set you free. What I was talking about earlier on, the first video, which I will still, I will still broadcast both of them, although it ended abruptly, but I would 
put a note that it's just a part one and this is a part two. I was talking about when, when I stand there and I look out at the stars and I start thinking about my life, I think about how repetitive everything is. I mentioned something called the uh, mon monotony of continuity, the rum. The monotony of continuity and how that actually doesn't bring the kind of excitement that I am looking for in an activity that is related to the purpose of my being. I'm looking for greater meaning for, for my being. What is my purpose? You know, it is not Okay, fundamentally, if we go with the... I'm a student of Neely Fuller. So if we go with the compensatory definition of purpose, it's solving problems. That's why I call myself a problem solver. The whole objective of being born and existing is to actually solve problems. So we're created to solve problems, basically. All right, what are the problems we want to solve? We want to eat, we want to be able to exist, we want to be, in, we want to be safe, we want to be secure, blah, 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 blah. So we go through all these various routines that are aligned with what society has told us that we should do in order to achieve those problems. But then there's something else. There's something that I'm supposed to do that is supposed to make the world a better place. My presence is useful. Every person created, it doesn't matter whether you are disabled, enabled, whether you're a genius, you're poor, everybody fits into a particular slot. Every life is useful. Purpose is attached to everything that exists. You cannot exist without purpose. There is a purpose for everybody, for everything. The universe doesn't make mistakes. Nothing dies. Everything is transformed, reformed, reshaped, re rescheduled. Nothing really goes. We've been. This universe has been here before, and it will be here after, and it's been here billions of years before. If things eroded, then you would know. It's like when you delete something on your computer, and you say it goes to the recycle bin, and you click on the recycle bin, and you empty the recycle bin. Okay, where does it go? Does it flush out of the computer? Hell no. Still in the computer. <laughs> you just think that you've created more space because you performed one act and nothing has really happened. What has happened? What, how, what physical activity can you use to actually justify emptying your recycle bin? Exactly. I'll wait. You tell me. You know, purpose, I think, lies within. And this is why I'm, I'm a big advocate of transcendental meditation. I, I meditate, but my meditation is not based on any kind of uh, pre-suggested format, you know, put your fingers at home and all that. I don't believe in all that. I think when you're in a state of quiet, you're already meditating. When you're conversing with the universe, when you're conversing with your creator, you don't need to be in any particular shape or form to do that. You just have to quieten your mind. You need to be silent. You need to speak your intentions. And speaking your intentions doesn't necessarily mean that you have to vocalize them. You can just be quiet and your intentions will speak for themselves. The universe cannot subscribe to any particular language because there are so many different languages. Now think about it, if I have to answer every single person with every single language, it gets confusing. But there has to be some simpler way to interact and that simple way has to be synonymous with all sentient beings, everything that is here. And that's how you feel, what you intuit, your intuition. It's the only way I can interpret it. That's the way I see it. I don't know how other people see it, but I see it as a state of intuitiveness. When you intuit, when you have intentions, what you feel, what you resonate, all of that actually encompasses the desire. Like they say, desire is of the Father. The desire, the word desire of the Father. Uh, your desire and then your desire is interpreted by the universe and Hopefully, if your desire meets 
the conditions that the universe presets and then comes true. That all depends on what you desire. You, where are we looking for our solutions? It's, it's kind of twisted. I know I'm, I've not done this much justice, but I'm speaking very abstract because these things are very deep and personal and they're different for every individual. So for me to actually go in as an authority, I'm not. I'm talking about how I deal with stuff. I always say this. I'm not an authority on anything. I'm not even an authority on myself because I have thoughts that I don't preconceive. If I have thoughts I don't preconceive, then how can I say that I'm in control of myself? If I lose my temper, then how am I in control? See, these are assumptions that we make based on so many things that we've been taught and led to believe. And I want to unlearn all that. I want to be free of deceit, deception, social order, control. I want my mind to be able to absorb truth and respond based on that it has absorbed. So the sponge takes in truth and then whatever comes out will be based on what has gone in, in and out. Conformity is another dangerous thing, but it's necessary, I guess, in the kind of world we live in, as is religion and all these other things that are used for social control. I don't ascribe to them, and you can put me in any category you want. I don't ascribe to them. I used to, but I came to a point where I search more for what is truth, what is universal truth. What is foundational? What are core beliefs based on universal truth? We dealt with core beliefs last week with the MED conversations. You should watch that video. It has some some nuggets in it. I would recommend you're on my channel, so you can just flip through the videos. You can see it. MED on the I presume I think it was on the seventh or the sixth of September. So ultimately, you know. How do we balance? How do we know what is and what isn't? How do we decipher this matrix we're in? I don't know. But I know it starts with introspection, meditation, going inside, quieting the mind, and then trying to improve one's character and stop telling myself any lies. Don't lie to myself. This is so imperative. Never, ever, ever lie to myself. Even if I want to lie to you, I tell myself the truth. I don't lie to myself. This is the key. Mm, yeah, This is just uh, me in a moment vibing. I'll try and break these things down when I actually write them down. I'm working on my website now. I'm going to actually start the blog, start writing again, do the V-blogs and the audio blogs. Everything is going to be on ea2wo.com. The website should appear any day now. I have my team working on it. And when it comes, then I think I'll be a little bit more detailed. Right now, I like to be abstract, so you can just take what you hear and think for yourself, rather than look towards me explaining any, something to the to a point where it becomes, because I don't really understand it myself. I'm trying to grasp these things. So I'm going to break out now because it's, uh, I've been on for about 14 minutes, and usually we have one more minute for the promos at the end of the video. So if you like what you see, Subscribe to the channel, share the videos, edit the videos, do whatever you want to do. Uh, subscribe, like, hit the bell, and that would actually give you a notification whenever I release new videos. And try and be true to yourself. Try and love who you are, all aspects of you. Appreciation and acceptance. That's the true definition, in my opinion, of love. When you appreciate and accept everything about you, good, bad, happy, sad, you'd find life a little bit better, easier to cope with. Have a good day. Much love. EA2, I'm out. Dreams only seem to manifest when I'm woke I'll bite the wings off an angel if that shit helps me cope But on this downhill stream where we tumble and roll It seems I only find solace in a couple of folks Yeah man, I'm grown now I'm trying to move up on my own now So I don't need no pronouns 
no intention of this slowdown. So tell me what you're thinking. I might tell you about my own sound. I'll tell